This is Selma Schimmel in Chicago reporting for the group room from ASCO, the American Society of Clinical Oncology, the annual meeting. And we're going to be introduced now to Dr. Sandeep Reddy, Clinical Professor of Medicine at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA in Los Angeles, California, where I come from too. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. We're going to talk about a really hot topic with you called molecular profiling and new technologies that help support this. But let's begin with uh, molecular profiling 101. What is it and what do patients need to understand as to why the genomics of their cancer is so important? Sure, I think that's a fair question. The reality is that 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, we would just treat people with drugs that we have off the shelf and we would hope and pray that it would work. And now we have the ability, the technology, to take a look at the cancer cells before we give the drugs, examine their nature, both, well, looking at the protein, the RNA, the DNA, there's multiple things we can look at. And in doing so, we can get a clue as to why that cell became a cancer, and we can use that information to better choose our therapies, and that leads to better outcomes. Let's talk about this particular type of molecular profiling called Target Now. The Target Now system has been around for about eight years. Uh, Dan Van Hoff from the University of Arizona had originally designed this. The name came from, he had a patient who had received multiple prior therapies and was not doing well. And he said, I need a target now for this patient. I don't know what to treat this patient with. And studies have been done, uh, published studies, that looked at when you have this clinical scenario and you give a patient a drug, often we do very badly. We refer them for a trial, and we have single-digit percentage returns. But when, we, when we've done molecular profiling, we get into the 25, 27 percent response rates, which doesn't sound phenomenal, but when we take that in the context of these patients had received multiple prior therapies and had done poorly, it actually shows the promise. So what Target now is is a multiplex gene analysis that looks at RNA, protein, and DNA and tries to synthesize all that information and say, Doc, we know that you've given this patient these drugs. Maybe you haven't considered this drug over here, and you wouldn't normally consider that in this situation. In this patient with, say, breast cancer, you wouldn't normally consider this drug. But molecularly, this looks like a good choice, and it turns out, again, at least one out of four times, it's, it's going to actually be substantially beneficial for that patient. What are some of the really key findings being presented at the meeting regarding Target now? Well, some of the key findings, I think, are that, as you referenced, in head and neck cancer, we are looking at a few other genes that I would say are not commonly thought of to be drivers in this cancer, such as P53. And we can use that information to better select therapy and also select, to some extent, prognosis. And that may not seem that important, but it can be very useful when you have a patient who maybe doesn't want to have a lot of additional therapy if they have a bad prognosis. But if you have a patient who has a good prognosis, you really want to push that and try to maximize that return. Um, and I think, you know, from the economic perspective, we have to decide how we want to allocate our resources. So this type of information is just critical going forward. What do you think uh, lies ahead? How will Target now evolve to really drive or support personalized medicine, and what does this mean for the future of patients and doctors and understanding the spectrum of treatment options that are out there? It's very exciting. Uh, in a very short period of time, within a few weeks, we're actually upgrading Target now to a new version. And in this new version, we have a whole new platform where we're bringing PCR-based testing in. And the advantage is for most PCR patients. PCR base, what is that actually? So PCR is polymerized chain reaction and allows us to use a much smaller amount of tumor sample mm -hmm. to still get a, a result from the RNA. So before we needed a lot of tissue, which can be a problem in certain certain clinical scenarios. For example, lung cancer is often diagnosed with a bronchoscopy and you get a very tiny amount of cells. And it's very frustrating because we have all these genes, we have all of this excitement, you have a patient in your office and you tell them, we don't have an answer. We need to go back and do another biopsy, which can be very nerve wracking for a patient. But now we can move forward, we can get an answer, uh, a good answer, 
with as little as 15 nanograms of DNA, which really comes down to a few cells. So, Dr. Reddy, for a patient who may be viewing this with you, mm -hmm. who already has been treated and they have their slides or there's still a paraffin block, can you work off of existing tissue? Yes. In fact, paraffin embedded tissue is fine. Uh, we don't need fresh tissue or live tissue. Um, very, again, very small amounts. When patients, uh, oftentimes, you know, if they come to this algorithm later in their treatment, mm -hmm. we may recommend a rebiopsy because the disease may change over time. Right. But at least now we can use a much smaller amount of tissue and still get a very meaningful answer. So a patient who, let's say, is dealing with a recurrence mm -hmm. or not having the clinical outcome of their current therapy, would it be possible for them to have their tumor going through the Target Now system? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's great we, to we know. We encourage that, yeah. And uh, so for more information, patients can go to MyCancer.com. At MyCancer.com, there's a, uh, a, I think it's a pretty good website to explain some of the basics. I think the key for patients to understand is before they go to their doctor, they want to be armed with the right kind of information to ask the right questions to prompt the right kind of discussion because if this discussion has already happened then it's moot but if it hasn't sometimes maybe a little prodding is necessary and depending on the patient's tumor type this is very appropriate testing. Will insurance pay for this testing? That's the beauty of it. Insurance, Medicare, almost everyone will pay for it because it's valuable, it works. Is it really costly? It's not really costly when you weigh that against the benefits. So for under three thousand dollars we can interrogate the entire tumor genome and provide a meaningful, actionable answer mm -hmm. as to what therapies will work. And when we weigh that against the tremendous cost of therapies and the tremendous cost of loss of life, it's actually, you know, pennies on the dollar. Well, I think you've just helped deepen the layer of hope that patients can have. I'd like to hope so. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much, Dr. Sandeep Reddy clinical professor of medicine at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA. Thanks for having me. Thank you.